October of 21, I attended an Outdoor News America Writers Conference held at the Texas Gun Experience. A really neat range, nice bunch of folks there. But among the exhibitors there was uh, some old friends of ours, Gordon Bond with Bond Arms. Uh, we go back 20 years with Gordon. Uh, Gordon is one of the nicest guys in an industry full of nice guys. Uh, he's just he's a, he's a good guy. He makes a great product. The Bond Arms uh, Derringers are just, they're like nothing ever made. The old uh, Remington Derringers and stuff like that cannot hold a candle of these things. They are built like tanks. The uh, fit and finish of them is absolutely impeccable. They're great little old two-shot Derringers and uh, they're available in a whole bunch of different calibers, a whole bunch of different styles. And they're going to roll out some new ones for us. Also, he has some of their bullpup 9mm. I've got a couple of those. And uh, those are great little 9mm. Just a very compact little bullpup design. That, along with the Derringer pistols that Bond makes, is just, they're just second to none. Hi, my name's Gordon Bond with Bond Arms. And uh, we appreciate all you guys uh, showing up today. And hopefully you've had fun with some of our new stuff. Uh, most of you guys have heard our story. I don't know that if I need to go into any history of that. You know, we've been around for 26 years now. Uh, my, and one gun I didn't bring was the, the original uh, Derringer. So, so you know, most of you guys you're familiar with Derringers from years past, and and Derringers have been around probably over 160 years now. Uh, I've got one in my drawer at, at the shop that's a uh, patented uh, Elliott design. 1865 and basically the design that they had done for so many years is the uh, hammer would just lay right on the, the hammer on the firing pin which means it's pushing it out into the breach and it's touching the primer and so if you slam the barrel down or you drop it and it hits the, the hammer it could accidentally go off and so for, for many many years those type of guns were just uh, known as cheap dangerous throwaway guns because they, they work and so um, my, my brother I got exposure to the Derringer. He, he was a true gun guy, and he's one of those guys, I'll never buy a Derringer, you know, I hate Derringers. And, and uh, as, as things go, he ended up working for a Derringer company. And he was a mechanical engineer, and he, he got in, he, he made their process better, he fixed things, he fixed their equipment. And then after about eight months, they just fired him. And he went, wow, I can't, you know, he moved to take the job and everything. And so he, he went home and, and he sat down with his wife and, and uh, on his little floppy disk uh, computer from way back then, he said, you know what, I think I can design a better product. So, so he did. So the very first thing he did was he put a trigger guard on this type of gun, which was the first. Nobody had ever done that before. And it's like, wow, really? <laughs> uh, and the other thing that he did uh, was he made a rebounding and a locking hammer so, so I can push it forward if I pull the trigger, but if I let go, it jumps back and it locks in a half cock position. And so it's always keeping the gun in a half cock position, keeping it off the firing pins. And so he, he patented that. And then one of the other things that he did, the locking lever on the original Derringer was on the other side. So he had to flip it 180 degrees to open it and close it. And if you felt the breach, you could feel the firing pin sticking out. And so he, he made it to where when it's on safe, you can take it off safe, you can cock it, you can uh, uh, open and close the barrel, and so you can do everything one hand. So it's a very easy operation. But one of the coolest things that he did was just with the eighth inch Allen wrench and six pins, we have over 40 different barrels you can switch out and uh, interchange. So just, just that simple. A lot of different calibers on that. Over the years, we've done a lot of different designs. Uh, I took over the business in 2007. Uh, th this was the first model that we, 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 we did when, when you know, I started uh, that part of the process. Uh, and we have a uh, rule at the shop that you know, once you've been there a year and you're 21, you can build your own gun to keep. So, so the guys kept on picking you know, this gun without the star and with, without the trigger guard. And I was going, well, that's pretty interesting. You know, I wonder why they keep choosing that. And so uh, uh, then I had a customer who did a custom star on there. And I saw it and I went, wow, that's pretty cool. So I had an epiphany that night and said, man, we need a black holster with that. And so we, 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 we did that. And my, my holster guy went, I don't do black holsters. I hate black holsters. And I said, I don't care. Do me a black holster. 
And so we put it together, and he called me about two weeks later and said, man, that's the most beautiful holster I think I've ever done. And so we put the package together, and it was the first and last time I ever shared anything with my brother, because I, I, I told him what I was going to do. And he went, that's the stupidest idea I've ever heard. I'm a gun guy. I know what gun guys like. And they'll never spend that kind of money on a dare entry. Well, it became one of our top selling guns. And then when his son turned 21, guess what gun? He won. <laughs> so, uh, and, and you know, in, in, in true, you know, the gun guys uh, wouldn't spend the money for just a basic Derringer, but this is a classy, well built, uh, built like a tank type, type of firearm. So, what we tried to do was really increase or, or you know, make the build quality just as best as we could. A lot of people call them a work of art, uh, and we've tried to just do as many cool things with it as we can. Ruger, actually, in 2019, they came out with their Wranglers. And first I heard of that, and I was going, how in the world are they selling them for $249? And so I went to the NRA show, and I looked at it, and I'm like, wow, they're not doing all the finishing, the parting line. You know, you can see the parting lines. You know, it's a little basic gun. Because if you look at the Vaquero, it's like an eight, $800 gun, beautiful, hand polished, and everything else, which is basically how most all of our guns were up to that point. And so I, I went home from that show and I sat down with my plant manager and I said, you know what? Uh, I want to go through every part and I want to figure out what's the minimum uh, deeper and finishing that we can do and still make it really look good. And so we, we came up with a concept and come to find out we could build four of these to one of these. And so we were able to drop our price and come in more aggressively. And you know, initially, you know, at that time we were needing sales, so I went, well, I'm gonna get real aggressive on pricing and let's let's see what this is gonna do. And it immediately just took off like a rocket. Uh, first distributor we went to just ordered a boatload of guns and we were going, wow, that's never happened to us before. Well, you know, for years, people had these guns and they said, oh man, I don't want to take that out in the, yeah. the bush and I don't want to damage it, I don't want to scratch it, you know, I'm sort of scared to shoot it because it's like heirloom quality and all this stuff. And we said, well, this is our tackle box gun. Now, I mean, this is the rough and tumble. Uh, the more scratches and dings you get on it, the more character it gives it. And People would just love that. Yeah. And then, then we went ahead and upgraded and we came up with the Grizzly. And I'll tell you the story of how we came up with the Grizzly. So years ago, we did a California model called the Brown Bear. And then we stopped selling in California. And we had nearly 2,000 of these grips sitting around. And we're going, what are we gonna do with those? And we just come out with the Rust Series and I, I put it on and, and I was thinking, well, this needs a black grip. And we put the brown grip on it and we're like, wow, that looks really good with the, uh, the, you know, the way the metal looks and everything else. And so we, we came up with a name and said, well, we've got these grips that have a bear on it. What do we call it? Ah, we'll call it the Grizzly. We got rid of those 2,000 grips. So. Seen or shot the uh, bullpup? All right. So, so this this is a really cool little gun. We, I, 
when we when we started doing the rust series guns uh, we literally took them the cnc offline that would cut the frames on this because we needed it to do the parts on the other so this one sort of took a back seat for about a year and we we just sort of left it sitting there we're, we're starting to get we're starting to crank them out again but it's such a cool little gun just really easy slide uh, you know, for, for those who don't know anything about it, it's a bullpup and, and basically the, you know, when I first heard this was a bullpup design, because it came originally from uh, Bower, uh, I was going, well, that's a rifle. You know, I never, you know, how can that be a pistol? And so, but when the chamber and extraction area is behind the trigger, that's a definition of a bullpup. And so I'm like, wow, this called a bullpup and that'll get people to come over and take a look at it because they'll be going, what do you mean? It's a handgun, you know? And so, but just a really easy slide. Uh, it's reverse fed, has a 3.35 uh, inch barrel. Uh, so we, we spent two years just working through the little bugs. Because uh, Mr. Bober, Arnie, he, he was a, he's a genius. I mean, he's a 3M uh, engineer. Uh, having conversations with him was like talking in code. I mean, it was, he was an interesting guy. But instead of taking this one gun, and there's problems, so let's fix the problems. He designed a whole new gun. That was his solution. He said, we'll build another gun. And so we actually have four models, three other models we hadn't even done yet. And so once we get rolling with this, we'll bring those out too. So our frame on this starts out like that. And then we cut the one side. And then you cut the other side. We do all this in-house. And then you get to this and fill that. And it's like, this is a feather compared to this thing. But we use, this is 70-75 aluminum. This is really, really hard aluminum. And if we, my, my, my brother, just to show me how tough this stuff was one time, we had a chunk of uh, one, one type of aluminum that's aircraft aluminum. And then we had the 7075, which is aircraft aluminum. And he took that and hit it, and it just put the biggest old gash in that other aluminum. And it didn't even ding this stuff. So it, it is really, really hard stuff. 